everyone we are looking at this little chart here that talks about how we feel an earthquake and when it's noticeable when it's not noticeable how frequent they occur on planet earth and there's something we call the richter scale yeah the richter scale has been around a while and a lot of people misinterpret how to use it but basically it's got these numbers from one to ten and it's just a matter of what you actually feel and you can see like the ones that people basically can feel are around 3.0s, 3 to 4.0s. That's when people start to notice the shaking. There's a lot of shaking that takes place that people don't even notice. You can see that happens about 8,000 times per day measured by seismographs. So that's very slight slips of the rocks as they slide past each other and transform boundaries, convergent boundaries, divergent boundaries. And it's a good thing that we get a lot of those little slips because if that doesn't move, then you end up getting the big numbers further down the scale, which can be pretty devastating, as you can see. So like, if you're talking about something around an 8.0 or higher, that's probably rock that hasn't slid past each other in a while. A long time. So that rock has been hung up, they've been building up pressure behind it, and we've talked about how that pressure is released in primary waves, P waves, and S waves. When we talk about these earthquakes and we actually feel them, they say it, we can feel a 3.0. What about a 4.0? They talk about what kind of effects happen, but how much stronger is a 4.0 versus a 3.0? Well, the first thing you'd think would be, well, it's like, you know, one time stronger because it's one number bigger, or maybe so somebody twice. might go, yeah, maybe twice, or somebody might think, ooh, well, maybe it's a little stronger than that. So the way that they figure it out is by measuring the S waves. So remember, we get P waves and S waves to arrive at different times off the seismographs. And the S waves, remember, are the surface waves, that up and down shaking, kind of like an ocean wave of the rock. That's true. And when a seismograph is drawn, uh, you can see the uh, difference in the motion of the waves. You can see on, by the graph here that your P waves seem to be much smaller than the S waves. What's really happening is the direction of shake. And so when looking at the S waves, we're actually looking at the intensity or amplitude of the wave. So the amplitude just being like the height of the wave. Right. So if we're thinking of a 3.0, let's make an example that a 3.0 shakes the land at about one centimeter. So you get a surface wave that has a height of one centimeter. It's a pretty small wave. But if we go to a 4.0, it's not twice as big. It's not even three times as big. How big is it? Here? The amplitude is 10 times bigger. So we go from a one centimeter height wave to a 4.0, which now has a 10 centimeter high wave. Right. So what happens when we get to a 5.0? How much bigger is that? 10 times bigger. Than what? Than the previous number, so that means 10 times 10 times bigger than the original number. So a magnitude five on the Richter scale versus a magnitude three is 100 times bigger. In height. In height. So you can see by this illustration how large the 5.0 is versus a 3 and even a 4. And if we go even further, the 6.0 would be 10 times more intense than the 5.0. Which would go right through the ceiling. And be 10 meters tall. 10 meter sticks worth of shake vertically up and down as that S wave comes by. Right over 30 feet. So that's ground shaking. But if we look at the setups there, Let's say I could draw a little block underneath that one centimeter hill. That would represent the energy that a 3.0 has. How much more energy does a 4.0 have? You could fit 32 blocks. Under the 4.0, huh? That is correct. So what about that 5.0 monster? 32 times 32 blocks. If you do that quickly in your head, you get 1,024. You do. So the energy does not increase by 10 times. The shaking, the height of the wave increases by 10 each magnitude. However, the energy goes up by a power of 32. It does. So 32 times 32 times 32. Lots of shaking plus lots of energy release. That's why an 8.0 or a 9.0 is extremely devastating. Those amplitudes get really, really large, and I could fit lots of little blocks in each of those little sets. Of course what's interesting is they had to come up with a different kind of scale to start to measure how much damage this kind of energy does. So that's where the Macaulay scale comes in. And you can see this goes from a 1 to 12 scale and it just shows you based on kind of building frames and structures how intense earthquakes can be. So we said before that pretty much everyone measures earthquakes all around the world. 
So the earthquake waves go up, down, left, right, and through the entire Earth. So they do go through the Earth. Once it was said that you could feel Krakatoa on the other side of the Earth. So there must be a way for them to travel through. And we can see here that they're traveling through, but there's something odd happening. So when the P waves, primary waves, hit different layers of the Earth, this is how we kind of figured out there was a core, an inner core, a mantle. The waves bend, kind of like a pencil bends in water. You get this refraction or this bending of light waves. You get the bending of earthquake waves through the Earth. Same thing with an S wave here. Remember the surface waves are more transversal waves and they actually can't pass through the core. So you get a much broader shadow for the S waves versus the P waves. So it turns out that you can't feel all of the earthquake waves every time. So some people could just measure primary wave or the secondary wave will never get to them. That's and if correct. that's the case, then they know an earthquake has occurred, but they know it's on the other side of the planet. So based off this shadow zone and the shadow map, we know that there's different layers of the Earth because of how earthquake waves interact with the inner outer core and even the mantle. Goodbye.